Okay, thanks very much for Distillery for inviting me and hosting this fantastic event. Um, you know, this is joint work with my PhD advisor, David Schmoyes, back in Ithaca. It's a collaboration between uh, Cornell and Ithaca, Cornell NYC Tech, and uh, New Yorkshire Bike Share Limited, who operates City Bike. And I just had a curiosity, I have a show of hands of who uses City Bike here. Okay, and how many of you have ever been stuck with a bike or unable to find one? Okay, so not, not, not too many, so things aren't too badly. So the goal of this project is basically to apply machine learning, uh, data science, and optimization technologies to make the New York bike share much more efficient. So bike sharing systems are becoming ever more prevalent around the world. They're an economical uh, way to have a sustainable lifestyle in the city. You know, they promote healthy living, they reduce traffic, they make biking more safer. Um, they're experiencing huge growth. Since 2008, the number of bike share systems worldwide has more than doubled, and that growth is set to continue. And as many of you know, New York got its first bike share in May of 2013 and launched with about 320 stations across Manhattan and Brooklyn and about 5,000 bikes. And it's been an enormous success so far. In fact, during the peak usage in the fall, we were approaching about 40,000 trips a day. With about 5,000 bikes in the field, that's about twice as many trips per bike per day as the next busiest system. So this huge usage, in fact, it hit 6 million trips recently, which is kind of a crazy number. Uh, creates a series of operational challenges. The chief among this challenge is the issue of system balance. So that's specifically, users take bikes from a system and leave areas of the city completely devoid of bikes, and also completely flood areas of the city with bikes. So we really need to think about how we tackle this. Um, so I'm going to give you an example. Here's a video of typical uh, weekday usage. So uh, on the right is the map, on the top left is the time. It's currently showing about 3 AM. Uh, red dots are bikes departing. Blue dots are bikes arriving. So as you can see, there's not much going on overnight. So once we hit about 6, 6.30, uh, the traders hit it first going downtown, and you begin to see the morning rush hour take place. So as you can see, a lot of people are taking bikes from the Lower East Side, they're dropping them up into Midtown, they're taking them from Hell's Kitchen, you know, bringing it downtown. And the uh, rush hour is over by about 10 AM, and we see some kind of low level usage throughout the day. That's uh, pretty consistent, you know, no particular patterns. And we see, again, an even bigger rush hour surge in the evening. So in fact, about 30% more people use it in the evening than in the morning. So that's coming up, going to kick off at about 4.30. Uh, and you'll see an almost exact opposite of the morning shift. And this kind of motivates why we have these rebalancing problems. So as you can see here, people are leaving downtown, leaving Midtown, heading towards the transport hubs, Penn Station, Port Authority, heading down to the Lower East Side. And by about half seven, uh, eight o'clock, it's all over. And we see some kind of low-level usage again until we hit the uh, hit midnight. So the three key questions when we think about uh, rebalancing the system, the first of which is, where do the bikes need to be? If we could click our fingers and have the system into uh, any state we want, what would that state be? And how do we think about you know, ways we can extract what that state is? Secondly, when do they need to be there? You know, we could have a lot of bikes in Midtown in the morning, which are going to be pretty useless. In fact, we want them in the Lower East Side or in the transport hubs. And finally, the most challenging problem is, you know, once we know where they need to be and when they need to be there, how do we actually get them there? So the first uh, problem we tackled when we started this collaboration is where and when do bikes need to be? So as you saw, most of the usage is either during the morning or evening rush hour. And in fact, of all the usage system-wide, just over 60% of it actually happens in the weekday rush hours, so which is kind of a crazy con statistic considering that that's you know, about four hours a day that accounts for 60% of the usage. So it's, you know, it's being a, something about data science. We analyze the trip data, and we use that to extract where bikes need to be. So we do this on a station by station level, and we need to take information about a station and have something we can uh, analyze. So basically take kind of station and patterns in that station into numbers. So use what we call the kind of trip flow curve for each station, which essentially means over time the uh, net flow of bikes in and out of that station. So you'd imagine at Penn Station in the morning it might start at zero. As time goes by, bikes are leaving, the curve is heading down. As you head towards the evening, bikes are going to come in, the curve is going to head back up. So we compute this, and we average over a lot of weekday da um, data, and uh, then we cluster it. And when we cluster this data, we uh, three really distinct clusters emerge, which are kind of fascinating. So the first is this series of stations that, let's say, over the morning rush hour, just accumulate bikes. So that could be somewhere in Midtown, somewhere in downtown around Water Street or something. And uh, we have another cluster, my favorite cluster, are stations that just seem to keep themselves balanced. They don't need any intervention. The net flow is about equal to the uh, net flow out. And these stations tend to be in areas that are in between a business and a residential district. 
And the final cluster is stations that lose bikes in the morning. So for example, uh, Penn Station and Port Authorities, people come in from New Jersey and take a bike to get to their office. So using this, we actually label these clusters. So we say, OK, if the station's going to become empty in the morning, well, we want to have as many bikes there as possible. So we're going to, say, assign a 90% fill level. Similarly, for the evening or for the uh, stations that are going to gain bikes, we want them to be pretty empty at the start of a rush hour period. And those ones that are self-balancing, well, we keep them about half full. So here are the two current um, planning maps for the city, where uh, for this is for planning for the morning rush and planning for the evening rush. Um, so as you can see, in the morning rush, we want a lot of bikes in the Lower East Side, nothing in Midtown. About the opposite in the evening, except for the Williamsburg problem. So no one ever wants to cycle in from Williamsburg in the morning. But when the weather's nice, everyone wants to cycle across the bridge at the end of the day. So now I talked about, you know, OK, we now know where the bikes need to be. We know we need to get them there before the start of the rush hour. So this is the most challenging problem, is how, we, how do we actually get the bikes there? So at the moment, we have two ways of moving bikes around the city. We either use uh, trucks, so a big box truck pulls up, a bunch of guys hop out. They uh, pull the bikes out of the station, they load it up, they drive across town, park somewhere, drop the bikes out. And uh, this can move, they move about between 30 and 40 uh, bikes each go, depending on the size of the truck. And this works pretty well, particularly overnight when traffic is light. But you can imagine, you know, if you're trying to operate in midtown in the rush hour, traffic is a huge problem. So in fact, we use these uh, courier, tra uh, these uh, bike courier bikes with a trailer attached. And they hold about three city bikes. And this initially seemed to me to be a crazy idea. But in fact, if you look at the data, in Midtown, one bike trailer moves twice as many bikes per hour as a truck, which is kind of crazy. And it costs significantly less to run. So we think about rebalancing in two uh, fundamental different problems. The first is the overnight rebalancing problem. So overnight, we get to use trucks. You know, As you saw from the video, the system's in a pretty low usage. Um, so if the things are static, we can compute some long routes, and we're pretty sure that when the truck gets there, the bikes will be there to expect to pick up. And our goal here is to get as close to the morning state as we can. And we do this by about an eight-hour window with a load of trucks, and we kind of compute routes that we think are going to have a high impact. And we target to make sure that things like Penn Station and Port Authority are well-serviced. Um, and this works, this works really well. So here's an example of a, of a route run in the uh, Lower East Side overnight. It kind of rebalances from a stash of bikes under the Delancey Street uh, bridge. Now, all of these assumptions go completely out the window once you're dealing with the rush hour. So traffic is really high. The station's in massive flux, which really motivates what we're working on currently, which is uh, some predictive modeling for a station state in the future. And in fact, we're working with the Cornell spin-off company, uh, Context Rather Than Based in Seattle, to achieve this. Um, we're beginning to have models which are getting close to usable, um, which is quite exciting. So for the mid-rush, we long since give up, gave up on rebalancing the entire system. There's far too much usage for us. There's no way we have the resources to do it. So we take a fundamentally different approach, where instead of keeping the whole system balanced, we just want to make sure that no one's ever too far from a bike or too far from a dock. So to achieve this, we kind of pick stations in certain areas of the city to make sure we have good coverage of all the stations in the city. And we do this in a way we don't make sure everywhere in the city is covered. We kind of make sure the transport hubs are particularly covered. Um, and also, during the rush hour, if you need to bail bikes out of a, a station, you actually have to put them somewhere. So in fact, you need to pair these stations up. So we have this nice kind of both clustering coverage and pairing problem that we optimize. And it's worked really well. So here's an example of a route that we run with bike traders in the evening. So we take bikes from the Port Authority uh, station, we cycle them a couple of blocks, and drop them off in 6th Ave. And bike traders just do this loop during the rush hour to kind of keep spots free and keep bikes available on, uh, on 6th Ave. So moving bikes is incredibly expensive. I'm afraid I can't give you a number for New York, but the estimated figure in London is about six pounds sterling every time a bike is lifted into a truck. Now, that's really expensive. That's too expensive. And we're beginning to think about, are there other ways we can rebalance the system? Specifically, can we get users of the system to help rebalance it for us? So this is an idea we're thinking about. And all going well, we're hoping to maybe put it into play in March or April once ridership goes up. So our idea is, we're going to incentivize users to rebalance the system. We're not going to give them any uh, microcredit. You know, these are New Yorkers. If we offered someone 50 cents to walk a couple of blocks, I don't think anyone here would do it. If I offered you a chance to win $500, would you do it? So we're going to enter people into a raffle. And there's been a lot of work in this. People love raffles. Uh, as a professor at Stanford, uh, Blaji Pravkar has done a lot of work on using raffles as an alternative to micro-incentives. And it's had particular success 
in uh, areas such as incentivizing recycling or incentivizing people to not take their car into Stanford campus. So the idea is we have we know from our kind of fill level maps where we expect problem areas of the city. So we break the city up into zones. We have a neutral zone, a shortage zone, and a surplus zone. So here is the evening uh, zones for the evening rush hour. Uh, red is a shortage, blue is a surplus, and, and gray is neutral. And what we want to do is we don't want to incentivize new ridership. We're just about you know keeping afloat with the amount of ridership we have. Instead, we want to just get people to shift their patterns slightly and try to drop the uh, amount of bikes we have to move. So for example, instead of someone cycling from downtown into catch a train in Penn Station, we don't want to drop the Penn Station. If they could cycle up um, into 6th Ave and walk those two blocks, we really want to reward them for changing their behavior slightly. So depending on what type of trip you take, we're going to offer you some raffle tickets. So the best possible trip is obviously going from a surplus to a shortage. But you know, not many people are doing that. You know, people are pretty set in their patterns. That's not where the commutes are going. Instead, we want to do things like, well, if you go take it from a shortage and you drop it from a shortage, you know, we're assuming you're going to drop it in a surplus. So by doing that, you've benefited the system, or we're going to reward you for it. And if you do something like take it from a shortage and drop it in a surplus, well, you get no raffle tickets. Tough. Uh, and the goal is we're going to uh, open the raffle uh, for each rush hour, and people are going to have. Uh, two chances a day to get some raffle tickets from one trip, both in the morning and the evening. And uh, hopefully that will shift behavior and uh, reduce the load in the system. So uh, thanks for your time, and I'm slightly early. So, Thank you. yeah.